What's up everybody, it's Jeremy from Berkshire Biking Board and this is a funky, quirky, fully custom, from the ground up, specialized Athos, built by one of my favorite people in the entire world who would like to remain anonymous. So, what is this? Specialized Athos, blast from the past, retro bike. My absolute favorite part about this bike, really the Athos in general, is that they went with circular tubing on this thing, even though it is a carbon bike. I love circular tubing. It looks so pretty. It looks like the 60s. It just, it's cool. Beyond that, there's tons of crazy stuff going on with this thing. Sometimes we here at the bike shop like to pull random parts out of the parts bin, which is just a bin of scrappy stuff in the back and make a homogamation, homogamation, homogenized, combination, custom. Bikes from parts that we find in the back, and this is a perfect example of this. Everyone does it a little bit differently. It depends on what you got, but it's like opening up the refrigerator and seeing whatever you have randomly left in the fridge and then trying to cook dinner with it. That's exactly what happened here. There's a little bit more of a philosophy behind this, and this is where it starts to shine somebody's individual characteristics as a person or personal preferences as a bike rider, which is that clearly there's a ton of aero stuff in this bike. Person wants to go fast, and they really like friction shifters, which is kind of like an old school, randonneur, hip thing to do on your bicycle. So a lot of fun stuff here. Let's start at the front. 38 millimeter handlebar, which is super, super narrow. Hoods cocked all the way in, a la Tare Pogacar. And clearly just going for that ultimate T-Rex kind of TT off the front, go fast riding position. We've got a couple of cables. Definitely not going full integrated on this one because that wouldn't be too cool enough. We went external cables in the front, helicopter shrink rack tape to hold everything together nice and tight, and a perfectly matching stem cap to match the specialized writing on the side here. Beyond that, we've got an old school style front brake lever here. We've got a front, a mechanical, mechanical front brake on this thing because we didn't want any shift levers hiding on here that wouldn't make any sense. So we've got mechanical old school lever and then just a little dummy lever right here so they have a place to rest their hands when they're in the drops. I'm gonna work out my way down here. Not to mention, don't forget all the perfect tape job on the front of the stem to, to make sure that there's no air blowing into the bolt holes because again, we don't want any whistling and we wanna go fast. Next, I'm gonna go wheels and tires. 60 millimeter Revolve Rapide wheels, which are very swanky wheels, probably not found in the parts bin, laced up with my absolute personal favorite, Slick Gravel King tires. This is a 35 in the front and a 32 in the back, AKA the road bike mullet. Why? Supposedly, this is a personal preference of this particular rider who would like to be, remain anonymous. Supposedly, the aerodynamic benefits are better with a big tire in the front and a small one in the back. Wind tunnel testing will tell you the opposite, but what's a wind tunnel anyways? Beyond that, big comfy tire in the front is much nicer when you're going over some chattery roads. If you decide to take something like this off some gravel, wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but particular rider here sometimes likes to do that. And then let's keep everything nice and fast in the back with a 32 mil millimeter tire. One little tidbit about these aero wheels. Well, there's two. All the DI2 ports that you see are covered up with tape here. When this bike frame set comes, you get all these little plugs. Instead of putting where they're supposed to go, this particular person used them to perfectly plug the ends of these through axles here, as well as plug up things like these little caliper mounts and these actually have tape over them. Everything is covered in tape, kind of like a New York City delivery driver, but for a different purpose. Okay, let's go from this cockpit and let's follow these cables down here. So this cable, front cable is fully integrated. Rear mech cable is in, integrated through this first half of the frame. And then down here in the bottom bracket, it gets spit out the back and we run down the chain stay here and then pop out right here. The routing should be inside of this frame for a DI2 setup, but the port is too small in the back. This particular cable right here is comes out the bottom bracket all the way down. And my personal favorite feature of this bicycle is to get some tension on the rear derailleur. We've got an old V-brake style noodle here connected into the, this is where things start to get even more interesting. 12 speed long cage Shimano SLX mountain bike rear derailleur set up to an 11 speed mountain bike 1144 tooth cassette. Now, why the big derailleur? Why the 11 speed cassette? Why the, how does a 12 speed derailleur match up to the 11 speed cassette? So this is where the magic of some bike mechanic ingenuity comes into play. First off, the long cage derailleur is gonna allow him to run an even bigger cassette if he wants to. This is a 46 tooth crank set up front. So we want kind of that one to one or more ratio. So 
basically the long cage can take a bigger cassette than this. The thing is, is because that's a 12 speed derailleur, it's actually not gonna throw correctly to shift perfectly on an 11 speed cassette. So we go up to the front here, we've got a friction shifter. So this friction shifter can have stops in it, but it can also have no stops, which means you can basically shift this thing like a sewing machine. It's a bit more manual, but it'll allow you to basically set that derailleur up perfectly without using the stops of the thing. One little thing that the rider did tell me that's not perfect yet is right now when this friction shifter is completely in, in full aero position, if you will, it's in the smallest gear. So it'll get the least aerodynamic benefit. What he wants to do down the road is have it set up so that when it's in the biggest gear, the hardest one to push, it's in this fully aerodynamic setup, but we're not quite there yet. The last couple things to talk about is the tape that's all over this bicycle. We've got it here, there's a little hole there. All these little caliper mounts and little bits and doodads, it's all covered in tape because whistling noise makes you go slow around a bicycle. And last but not least, my favorite little piece where the bar end plug was supposed to go right here, he's taken that bar end plug and stuffed it in the crank set here to make that look nice and smooth. So chapeau, my friend, for making a beautifully custom parts bin aerodynamic road bike. And I wanna tell one little quick story about this random hero on his first day out. So we're going on a group ride and we all love group rides. And, and the A group here is pretty fast. It's one of those things where like, if you get spit off the back, you're not getting back on basically. If you get a flat tire, sayonara sucker, we'll see you next week. We're going out for a ride and within a mile, said person gets a flat tire, first ride on the bike. I look back over my shoulder, you've got like a split second to decide if you're gonna go be a hero and help your friend get back on the bunch or say, see you later. I didn't have the legs that day, so I made a split second decision, which was to go. I look over my shoulder and he says, just go, I'm never gonna be able to make it, don't worry about it. So we keep riding. We go up, out of town, up big, big, big climb. We did wait for a couple minutes at the big climb, but not for very long. Back out down the downside of this climb. We're about 45 minutes into our ride at this point, and I'm, I'm, I take a pull, I, I'm going to the back of the group, and I look over my shoulder for whatever reason, and I see this image in the distance. It looks like a bike rider. I think nothing of it, I ride a little bit for a little bit longer. And five minutes later, I look over my shoulder, and what do I see? Same image, a little bit closer. Looking like they're digging pretty deep. I'm like, damn, who the hell is that? And I think maybe is that like some random hero? Is that somebody else from a different group ride? Like what's going on here? And we're going 26 miles an hour down the road. Like most people are not catching up to us at this point. I take a second, I look back over my shoulder again. I go, oh my God, it said anonymous first time out Athos bike rider, my hero at this point. I fall off the back of the group because I know I can, I can catch back up to the group from with how far back they are. I go to, basically I fall off the back. So I'm like, okay, this person has just turned them inside out to catch back up to us. So I, I'm like, I'll do the right thing. I'll drop back, I'll let him get on my wheel, I'll pull him back up to the group. I drop back, I drop back, I look at him. Salt, just, he looks right through me. He's so deep in the cane pave. I ride with this person all the time and I've never seen him this deep. I look at him, I try to give him a nice friendly smile, boom, rides right past me. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna get on his wheel. He's clearly on a mission here. First time on this rocket ship. I get on his wheel, he pulls right up to the group. I think he's gonna jump back in the back of the group and, and basically sit in and take a break. What does he do? Boom! Rides right past the group, right off the front into a breakaway. Oh my God, I love bike riding, I love bike riders. And this is what makes the sport so fun is the people are awesome. If you like this kind of content, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, round up for distance, round up for time. Thanks for watching.